so yeah hi uh good afternoon good evening everyone wherever you guys are joining in from uh welcome to our highly anticipated master class uh building yeah. trust network the ecosystem of digital credential so i am nidin and it's a pleasure to be your host today as we delve into the world of digital credentials trust networks and the significance uh it has today in the rapid rapidly evolving education landscape so before we begin let's take a moment to outline what we can expect from today's get together uh firstly we will explore the transformative powers of digital credentials and the role it has in shaping the future of education then we'll introduce you to our distinguished speaker who has a wealth of expertise and insights to share with us today finally we'll open the floor to the questions you have and we'll answer if uh, what are the questions coming in from our audience to start our journey it's my privilege to introduce our esteemed speaker for today as master class dr karan deep singh now dr karan deep is not only a tedx keynote speaker but also a member of ted ed with his impressive academic background global experience in the k12 and ed tech industry and his role as an ambassador to the united nations for sustainable development goals of 2030 he is a change maker and a leading edupreneur his accomplishments are far fetching uh, including recognitions from the forbes magazine and fortune india and his involvements in ground breaking research of sustainable ecosystem for global education parameters now dr karandeep's academic journey has taken him to kyoto university and harvard where his research has made significant contributions with publications in harvard medical school we are eager to learn from the wealth of knowledge and insights he have it's a privilege to welcome you today mr karandeep uh, happy to have you on board yeah thank you so much for having me and uh, i really appreciate uh, you know uh, the detailed introduction and uh, look forward to having a very engaging interactive yes. session with the uh, with the attendees today yes yes great great so yeah uh, so before we proceed again uh, like yeah so let me introduce uh, you to our ground breaking products that complements today's uh, discussion so i want to introduce everyone to links uh, it's a cutting edge platform that revolutionizes the way we authenticate and we share credentials in the digital realm like links is a system which basically harnesses the power of blockchain technology to provide digitally verified credentials that are secure immutable and tamper proof so we can say goodbye to our age old uh, struggles of counterfeiting forgery and misplaced documents we uh, encourage every organization whether you are an education institution a corporate training provider a professional association or any other entity listed here to explore the possibilities with links your credentials can become truly empowered uh, i quickly want to introduce the other solution which is called as android again it's an innovative uh, generative ai powered learning management system that streamlines education and makes learning and teaching more efficient it's a cloud based and multi tenant platform offered which offers a personalized look and feel through recommendations automatic grading and real time feedback to improve learning experience of the students uh, now again android is an in, uh, intuitive design and a user friendly interface simplifies the process for both learners and for the trainers uh, now without further ado let's hear from our esteemed speaker dr karandeep uh, as he shares his insights on the ecosystem of digital credential and the role that plays in building trust network and how lms is can empower learning in today's time over to you uh, mr karan thank you right um that was a good uh, context to you know your solutions and welcome to all the attendees uh, who have joined us i suppose from different yeah. time zones if i if i possibly understand <laughs> right so um see uh, what uh, you know um, he just spoke about when it comes to digital credentials uh, i'll get straight into the crux of something very interesting so before i do that few prerequisites i have it's going to be an interactive session that means i'm going to be asking you guys a lot of questions a b i would be expecting questions from you c it's going to be a discussion rather than you know me just blabbering away and you passively listening i don't do those kind of sessions 
So it's going to be a, a session where I would definitely expect uh, you're not an attendee, you're an active participant into the session because Absolutely. your perspective, your input to what we're going to talk about today is going to be very, very critical and pivotal. So we're going to, we're going to be uh, keeping it very interactive and it's going to be a two-phase communication, right? So coming into the context of how uh, this topic or, or, or let's say what we're talking about today is relevant to me. So having had the exposure of, uh, you know, working uh, after I did my post grads from Oxford University, I got um, an opportunity to work with Apple. This is way back um, when uh, Apple was already successful and they were, we were designing uh, something called uh, the new sound design application, which is what we hear now in the, you know, the new iPhones. And I was part of that team. And okay. five years of working with Apple back in the UK gave me the interesting perspective that innovation or tech um, is never away from any industry. When I say any industry, that means that um, I'm going to be talking about obviously three core topics. When you talk about digital credentials, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and how this is not something that is you know, uh, uh, like how during the pandemic, we assume that edtech is going to be the new normal. It's not like that. These are things which are now the uh, industry standards, the benchmarks. So we need to understand whoever is listening that in order for any industry to sustain, number one, first of all, survive, sustain comes sec sec second. You know, for any industry, whether you're in product management, whether you're in L&D, whether you're a K-12 or a higher ed education, any kind of organization needs to embrace and pivot according to the requirements of what this gentleman just mentioned when we talk about digital credentialing. So I'll, before I come to that, I want to talk to you about why uh, when we talk about blockchain and uh, when we talk about artificial intelligence, someone who gave it, uh, my second TED talk that I gave and I'm going to mm -hmm. play a small snippet of that so that you can get a bit of perspective of where I come from. The topic was actually of my TED talk was education and AI. Okay. So I had basically developed a collaborative learning model, which basically means that we believe in the people who work in innovation and technology mixed with education believe that we're living in the age of collective intelligence. That is the... Human intelligence is not going to go anywhere, but um, if we are not able to understand and amplify and harness artificial intelligence in its all dimensions, there is a possibility that whichever industry we try to propagate could reach a factor of uh, redundancy. Hence, uh, when we talk about topics of digital credential, why this is transformational or exponential is that... Um, to give you a very raw example, uh, some of you, I, 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 I don't know, I would like to know more about you guys. So some of you could be leaders in your organization. Some of you could be leading teams. I mean, you might be having different roles. You have to understand that we're living in an age where digital security is, is a very different term now. Uh, when we talk about digital security, your credentials, your documentation, I'll give you an example. I work with an organization where even K-12 students, we expect them to not just have a blockchain account, but okay. every uh, uh, score or any activity that they do is uh, stored into their blockchain account with a proper key. Why are we doing this? I'll tell you. Because the personalization of their profile is going to be not a CV. It's going to be the blockchain account. Um, and why it needs to be credentialed is because tomorrow, in the next possibly not even one year, possibly six months to one year, any person who's looking for a job, if you want to genuinely showcase your individuality, and now this is the interesting part. So your human factor is going to become more human and your, I mean, your achievements, your possibly your, um, you know, let's say your USPs are going to become more uh, individual linear to you if you are using blockchain to its optimal condition. Whereas a CV is redundant. We are not looking in the industry for CV, CVs anymore because CVs don't tell us who you are. 
we don't understand your your are you a cultural fit are you uh, you know we 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 might run all kinds of tests so you will see that the age of running typical psychometrics and all is going to go we are looking at digital credentials from i'm just giving you one perspective on that to share with you let me try and uh, see if i can share my screen uh, and i'll just check my audio if it's working so that the audience can get a small snippet we'll start with the uh, ted talk and then we will move into something that's already happening what 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 the gentleman spoke about what's happening in the european union because sometimes you know as indians we have something uh, of a block that okay if, if the white man is telling it it must be true but if a brown man is telling it <laughs> we yeah, we are skeptical yeah. it's okay you know all of us have that um, unfortunate uh, uh, dna and grain after 100 years of uh, slavery but i'm going to give you a small perspective of this ted talk and why i'm doing this is because i realized very early that artificial intelligence and human intelligence collectively only leads to innovative intelligence for example if you want to innovate now you're not supposed to see ai as a detrimental product it's not something that can replace you on the contrary it is created by you and you're supposed to harness it to be an exponential leader or an exponential person if you um a going to denial mode or you know going to a mode where you say you know this is not going to um it's it's short lived and a lot of people have are skeptical about the, the the evolution of tech the way it is but you have to understand skepticism doesn't never takes us anywhere i'll give you a very small example because majority of the time has been in education when the pandemic hit right a lot of teachers were like oh this is very temporary nobody's going to use that tech or um you know there were teachers who were even reserved uh, to the fact that we're not going to use google classrooms and ironically when the lockdown happened these were the same teachers who were running to learn how to use google meet so that they could save their job so my point is i being someone who believes that technology in the hands of any human being is going to be powerful but if we assume or presume that it's not going to uh, you know have an impact on where you are then we are treading in very dangerous waters so i'm just going to share my screen now uh yeah. just let me yeah that should be fine so let's share my screen we'll start with the ted talk briefly yeah and then we'll come into the presentation where i want to talk to you about what the complete european union is doing with reference to credentialing and blockchain okay, okay. let me know if guys if my screen is visible to you yeah yes it is yes cool all right so uh, let's just have a short look at this ted talk you guys can watch it later and of course you're more than welcome to uh, connect with me anywhere so i'm going to come straight to the point we're not going to go through the whole ted talk and you know by the way uh, just to give you a small context which you will just listen to right now uh is a surprise part which i normally don't give in my bios so this is a surprise for also our host so okay. i think this is just to give you some some perspective I think uh, we can't hear the audio. Hi, yeah. Am I? Uh, is the audio audible? Uh, on the video, actually. Yeah, the video is it coming audible? No. No, no, no. Okay, hang on. Let me just check. Uh, just bear with me for a second. Yeah, no worries. Let me just check the audio, 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 audio. Share some. I think that should work. Let me know, guys, if you can hear now. uh um for any talk i Is always uh, take away one aspect which i don't give in the bio which i want to uh, talk to the audience about and that's the, the secret recipe of my journey so i'm a fourth generational indian army uh retired captain uh, who has been awarded with the sena medal by the indian army and the indian government um to give you a perspective my great grandfather fought in the second world war my fa grandfather fought the 1971 war my father fought the kargil war he's a pvsm and 
I was in the Short Service Commission, commissioned as a lieutenant, served for five years in counterinsurgency and counterterrorism for five years in the heart of Kashmir. And that's something that I, whenever I give talks, I don't want to put in the bio because that's something I want to engage with the audience. But at the same time, you heard certain things about my bio which are related to education. Now that comes from my mother. She's a retired 35 years college lecturer from Punjab University in the field of political science. So there was an interesting balance in our family where the army legacy of, you know, four generations and the educational legacy. So that's one point that I wanted to add to you. So to give you a little bit of perspective of my journey, I... Across India, there are orphaned and abandoned children with no one to protect them. Completed uh, my short service commission in the army and then after retiring as a captain, got a scholarship at Oxford University and did my master's there. And uh, got a chance to work with a corporate company called Apple, we are all familiar with. And that was a very interesting experience, you know, coming from India and then going into the UK. I was always fascinated with innovation and how things change. And that led me to my further uh, research at Harvard Medical School. So I was able to patent uh, something called Forest Education Program, which is patented under the Indian government. And for that, I was featured in the Forbes magazine. You can always Google it. And um, during the pandemic, there was a lot of attrition happening. Uh, you know, a lot of people were leaving their jobs, losing their jobs rather. And that's when I created an ecosystem in the edtech industry where people who were leaving job, who were getting fired from, you know, K-12s and, ed, you know, higher education could actually get jobs into uh, the edtech uh, diaspora. So for that, I was again featured by Fortune magazine. And again, you can read about it. Um, enough about the journey. And uh, of course, there is something very important, which I should mention before we get into the presentation. Uh, it's been six years now that I've been representing India on an international scale as an ambassador to the United Nations. I'm sure all of you must have heard about National Institute of Transforming India, Niti Aayog. So I represent India as an ambassador for the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. There are United Nations 17 goals. We have a target of 2030. So it's been five years I've been fighting this battle nationally, internationally. It has taken me across Europe. It has taken me across Africa, Southeast Asia, and of course, in the heartland of India. What I'm going to talk to you about today is something very important, interesting. Now, this topic is to do with the collaborative learning model. This is something that I'm researching right now. I'm about to create a patent in this. I'm sure all of you have by now heard about AI, you know, artificial intelligence, and we are talking about things like chat GPT, and then we're talking about generative AI and how it is going to impact lives. So someone who is now coming from an educational and a military experience and a corporate experience, I can safely tell you that this is not something that's going to happen in the future. It's happening right now. It is happening every single day. So there's a model that I've created, which is a combination of human intelligence collective intelligence, artificial intelligence, which actually leads to innovative intelligence. So now we are at the cusp of something very new. All of you who might be from the uh, 80s, uh, you know, generation people who were born in the 1780s, I'm sure you must remember when the internet came out, the World Wide Web, uh, you know, the 2000, uh, uh, there was this whole scare, okay, there's something new happening in the world. The World Wide Web is coming, but we all embraced it. So you have to understand that in the same way, exponential transformative um, education uh, in all spheres, not just K-12, but AI is going to be not the future, it is already the present. The reason I chose this topic is because I have been working um, in roles like a principal, roles in where I'm leading more than 25,000 children as a director, roles where I've been a CEO of a tech companies, roles in which I have had the opportunity of running international universities in the UK. This is one of my mentors, a gentleman that I've always followed. And if you read the code, it says, follow the path of the unsafe, independent thinker, expose your ideas to the danger of controversy. And in simple terms, this means disruption. If I'm standing here today and I'm saying, no, this is okay but you disagree and you say, no, this is not okay. I can do better and I can prove it to you. So putting a dent in the status quo, saying that I can innovate, that's disruption. 
So the industry is not anymore looking at 1% growth, 2% growth. We are in the age of exponential growth. What is exponential growth? That if I've grown 5% today, in the next quarter, I would grow 150 and in the next quarter, I would grow 500. So this is not only applicable, remember guys, to education. This is applicable to every industry. So my first point to you, you have to understand that artificial intelligence is not to be taken as an enemy. So memories of what happened in the army, I was able to bring it into education in a very interesting way. When you look at the future of AI and why I'm harping this tune again is that without artificial intelligence, whether you're a software engineer, whether you're a businessman, whether you're a charter accountant, whether you're a school principal, you will not be able to survive because AI is going to overpower you if you do not harness it. Please remember one important factor. AI is not created by someone else apart from a human being. So now you're sitting at the cusp of a very new change in how we will live. You're sitting at the cusp of a change where artificial intelligence and human intelligence have to go together. And I'll show you an example. See, you have to understand artificial intelligence. Right. So just to give a quick context and not get into the whole thing, I want you to understand that why I am very passionate and working on this. In fact, on blockchain, what I wanted to share with you guys, why I shared this aspect uh, with the audience is because you can imagine a guy who has been, you know, traditionally trained into the armed forces, worked in uh, very a very different role, who started his career in a very different role, went into a different kind of technology, corporate technology. Um, the lesson that I want to share with you is that you have to understand that if we do not move with the pulse of what is happening in our industry, if we're not situationally aware, we become redundant. The industry cannot um, uh, carry us along, right? That's where blockchain, uh, when we talk, when we when the Bitcoin revolution happened and blockchain happened, and we know that credentialing is not just for I use it for education, but for any kind of security. And I'm going to now show you something which is far more critical because. You know, when I when I when when we talk about credentialing, you have to look at what the world is doing with it. And I'm I will be open to questions also. So uh, you know, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Let me just share my um, screen and actually show you the official document of the European Union and what they are doing with Web three. I'm sure a lot of you would have already understood verifiable credit, uh, credentials, blockchain, and a digital wallet and what they do. And I'll just look at a QA. and a There's, okay, it's all, okay, fair enough. So what, um, just bear with me. So I think Web3 is something that all of us understand. What I want you to understand why credentialing is very important is that it is actually fair, number one. It decentralizes this whole problem that we face till Web2. That's where organizations that you're seeing on our screen today are going to be not the future, but they are the present. And I'm not talking this, guys. This is not my presentation. This is the official European Union's version of how they are working. The complete European Union is working on this. You can see the logo at the bottom. So verifying credentials is a new way of expressing information. Any kind of information that you have is only going to be validated in the coming days. Any kind of credentials that you want to show, any kind of work experience that you want to show, any kind of, um, I don't know, um, security that you want to keep, this is the way it's going to be, credentialing. Without credentialing, validation is not going to happen. And I understand that you, I, if you remember the TED Talk, I spoke about disruption. So disruption is right in front of you in the form of this organization. Why? Because they're already doing something that possibly in the Europe, in the UK, and in the United States is already happening. And it is also happening in India. It's just that we Indians have the tendency, A, to procrastinate, and B, whenever there's new innovation, we first push back rather than embracing and uh, evolving with it. Um, why? I mean, what is verifiable credentials if i may if i may tell you there's a very interesting term that the european union uh, uh you know governments together when they created this have come up with is that it is based on self-sovereign information sharing pattern now this is 
and an amazing revolution that i should have, i am using the word revolution because the holders that's the subject the person of this credentials are now in control of how when and by whom the information is verified this is absolutely what we call transformational okay this was not something that we were uh, given the access to before so now the factor number one that you see on your screen verified credentials and of course we look at decentralizing models your digital identity i'm not talking about just your social media i'm talking about your actual digital imprint and your identity and of course certain factors that i want to talk to you about so um second all right so we're not going to go into the tech of it i'm going to share these slides with our uh you know uh organizers and they can share it with any uh, audience member who would want to know or you can connect with me on linkedin and know about it we don't have to know how it works because this is something that the organization right in front of you has absolute knowledge about right but i want to talk to you about the benefits because i am using it myself i have a blockchain account and um, i've been using bitcoin for quite a while and i found it absolutely uh, you know the next uh, you can say not the next generation that's the wrong word to use or a better word i would say i would say that's a present way of how one has to exist so um interestingly there is something very beautiful uh, in the uh, european union uh, there is a cross border friendly format i mean we obviously being one country we don't need that but interestingly our portfolios are key let's say you have a blockchain key or your password you can share that unique key with any person that you feel is the right person wherever they are and that would possibly have your complete personalized individualized sovereign database when i say database it's not something like uh, you know uh, a linkedin account or a facebook account. this is something very different and that's why i would want you guys Uh, just give me a second. See, the age of how verification was done in the world. We'll not go to the world right now. We will come back to India. Verification. Example number one, exhibit A. You're an HR. You look at a CV, right? I have, let's say, written that I've done this PhD from here and this from there. What do you do? You you do a reference check. Okay, so you call a couple of numbers. How do you know those numbers are valid? You check or not check? Or you spend a lot of money hiring a third-party company uh, like Securitas. I'm just taking an actual name, which we use, mm -hmm. which is a um, waste of money. Why? Because um, they would not be able to create the credentials of verification for that particular individual. I'm just using an HR terminology. It applies to everything, whether you are using it for banking or whether you're using it for any other aspect. So my uh, first question, or I don't know if the audience is listening uh, to it, is that how many of you are using a digital wallet or how many of you are already um, understanding how blockchain works? Anyone uh, can respond from the attendees or drop it into your q a or some i mean you can just type it in the q a i can read it from there uh if you want uh, yeah so ecash is david is talking about ecash pretty common especially gcash fair enough yeah it is absolutely roger so um uh david where are you presently in where are you in singapore or somewhere else I think David is from Philippines. You're in the Philippines. Lovely. Okay. So, yeah, I've been using crypto-friendly exchange myself, and it has been absolutely transformational sitting in India. And glad to know uh, that you've joined us in uh, Philippines, David. So, David, um, and of course, uh, I think I would use David as someone of a mascot to ask the other attendees to also be interacted. Another very interesting thing I wanted to share with you guys is... Um, for the ones who possibly um, 
you know, look at just just let me share my screen just a second. Look at blockchain and they're like, okay, tell us a little bit more about this credentialing or why are we doing this? You know, or, I mean, wh wh what's the logic? See, the logic is it's actually not complicating things. It, it's actually simplifying things. Uh, whereas uh, organizations are looking at who you are from a very different perspective now. We're not interested in your qualifications. I'll be very blunt and honest with you. We're not interested also in your work experience. We're actually interested in you. So uh, what that actually means is that who you are as a person, your temperament, your MI, your multiple intelligence, uh, cultural fit to an organization, or for that matter, um, if you are someone who's genuinely done something amazing, you would see a future. And I'm not genuinely, uh, I'm not saying that this is not going to happen. When you look at even organizations like the Nobel Peace Prize Committee, there is a recommendation that has gone from Harvard that in the coming years, when we choose uh, shortlisting uh, candidates when we do for, for Nobel Peace Prize, we have been, uh, Harvard has given a recommendation to use credentialing and blockchain. And in fact, they're pretty open to it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the biggest institutions in the world have realized that this makes their life so much easier. And I'm sure, uh, you know, the organization would agree with that, that it doesn't complicate. Uh, we, we assume that, okay, I'm going to use this and then there'll be this and that. In in the areas where I'm working, grade 10 students are using it. Can you imagine? Grade 10 students are on blockchain. They're using it. And trust me, I will leave colleges when they come for placements to universities. I have created this ecosystem. And when they see their blockchain accounts with all of their credentials, credentialed properly, their individualized portfolios, they're amazed. You know, they're like, wow, okay, so so we don't need to actually know this guy's degree and what marks. We understand this person within five minutes. So when I say your human factor of what you talk, like what I'm talking right now, my credentials would be my actual framework, my backup, my, my, my who am I? So when I say who am I, students are already, I mean, youngsters rather, let's not use the word students, are already realizing the power of blockchain and credentialing. So credentialing becomes... Uh, something of a fail-safe mechanism. It is not something that can fail because um, people might have some random, I would say, one-on-one -on -one questions, hacking and all of that. But let me be very honest with you. Every single day, there's not a single human being who might be sitting here who is not using Google Pay or uh, some online UPI payment method. 24-7, we are... How many times do you go to the ATM? How many times do you actually even use a debit card anymore? Forget ATM. Do you even pay from a debit card? I, I asked myself a question yesterday and I realized it's been one year. I forgot to use my debit card. So you have to understand that technology, which is convenient to you, you're using it. From the same school of thought, this technology is absolutely convenient to you. I'm just going to quickly show you some two, three slides, because of course the session has to be crisp and then, then I'll be open to questions. Just give me a second. Uh, okay, let's just, mm, yeah, got it. Okay, so for someone who might possibly look at blockchain from a, a, a fresh perspective, let's assume, um, I'm going to use certain terms and I'm going to ask you guys to answer these terms. Mutability, capacity, distributed, enormity, decentralization. My favorite is decentralization. Of course, second favorite is security. Now, I will also open the Q&A. Uh, okay, no, we don't have any questions. So, can anyone tell me, I know you guys would be very comfortable with security and decentralization. My question is a why. Why do you think decentralization is required? now in this age and what is your perspective and understanding of decentralization i would really love to know that is that possible to give you a perspective look at this this is a ledger a simple ledger but when you start using uh, why banks are using blockchain for that matter? Why are we using it in banks and all of the places? Why fintech has become so big? 
is because it's actually so easy. It's right in front of you. So decentralization, because nobody responded, is a procedure for distributing and diffusing power away from the central power. That's absolutely important. Because single point of failure issue, um, centralized systems are having a problem. Now, what does that actually mean? I don't know how many of you uh, remember any Americans here or who understand um, certain, let's say, fintech politics or geopolitics. There was a housing bubble crash, massive one that happened way back in the United States. Has anyone heard about it? If yes, you can put it in the Q&A or if somebody can explain it to me before I do, and I'll tell you why technology was not used correctly at that point. Anyone in the audience? Attendees? Oh, yes, maybe. What happened uh, in the United States of America, which led to a complete world recession? Why did the whole world fall apart? Because of what happened in the US. That's a very important question. If, if, if you, if you, are genuinely interested, I would request Google it or ask ChatGPT. Second question, how many of you are using a paid subscription version of ChatGPT4? Third question, how many of you realize that organizations like the one that I'm talking with today are not fragmented organizations? In fact, uh, the complete governments of uh, Europe, England, are dependent on uh, credentialing and blockchain. Without that, neither the banks work, security doesn't work, even for the fact that the military doesn't work. Military credentialing is now done through uh, blockchain-based you know, uh, software. And of course, it is AI-enabled. And what happens with that is your work becomes really easy, right? So um, coming from a person who has pivoted possibly five to six times uh, and evolved with the times, my possible summarized message to you would be that it is absolutely critical for any human being who wants to not survive in this world, but grow and innovate or uh, be the master of the universe to move, move with the times. And the times are right now, from, from the vertical that we are talking about today, they are about optimizing blockchain with the help of AI, of course, and understanding the critical value of credentialing. Because without that, you will notice that any organization, XYZ, in any form, whether it's a bank, whether it's security, whether is not gonna accept uh, our uh, portfolios in the coming times. It's happened already in the world. It's a policy. You can read the actual, the thing that I was reading to you is the United, European Union policy. It's an actual policy already in majority of the world. And soon India is going to follow suit. So organizations like yours is, is are going to be centralized. The government is already looking for that. So I'm open to questions, guys. Uh, any questions if you have before we wrap up and anything else you would like to know? Uh, sure. Great insights, uh, Dr. Garandeep. So we have a, a few questions from our live stream. Uh, so there was a question from an audience uh, on how can blockchain be used to protect the privacy and security of digital credential holders? Right. So I think we all know that it comes with a unique, uh, I mean, your organization would can answer it even better than me. I mean, I give me. Uh, so mm -hmm. why don't you give the audience a good perspective how your organization, for example, is giving the kind of security that you do to when it comes to, you know, uh, protecting their, because that will give them a genuine perspective of how organization function on blockchain. Exactly. So uh, see, uh, with us, we actually emphasize a lot on uh, digital credentials uh, and basically the main objective for that is like it is a links what we talked about or what i spoke about in the beginning of the session it is a system which actually works on the blockchain technology and again uh, it's something wherein uh, certificates or your badges are tamper proof like i mentioned right so there are less chances of it being counterfeited less chances of it being or misplaced so the certificates 
gets into that blockchain system and like you mentioned it's a decentralized system where it's a decentralized system absolutely absolutely so perfect see, see your answer is on point absolutely and and to add value to what you're saying uh see it is very important for us to understand that in the fintech and the banking industry number one in the the factor that the military in the united states is using this uh for absolute critical data because in the past in the recent past we all yes. know about wikileaks we know about the leaks that have happened of credentialed uh sorry uh, critical classified documents why why did it not actually happen because of the fact that they could be easily hacked so when you talk about hacking this is not like some username and password you put on a bank uh, mm -hmm. id and you know some how it happens in funny countries like india like ours where some guy will say sir send me your otp this is not like that you have to understand this is far more um the full proof than any uh, uh, software system that has been built before so yes. we have to understand that credentialing is not just safeguarding your your assets it is also giving you the power to control them as of now today how many of you think that you actually control you don't hmm. you are not in control of your things exactly. let me break the bubble for you in a very raw manner if you assume that you're in control of your credentials you're absolutely wrong if you think you're in control of your uh, uh possible um, you know somebody says oh i made a fixed deposit in the bank or i uh, did this it's not in your control you have to understand i mean i'm just talking from a finance perspective because that's one of the subjects that i work and i research on but when i talk about sustainable finance there's a new research paper that i published at harvard which is to do with sustainable financial practices and the number one practice that i told is that when we look at financial fintech future and why it is earlier on we had uh, banks that appear that is going to overpower now banks realize that we have to use it because that's the most safe fail safe way to work so how does that link with blockchain that is the technology that is the credentialing so in order for you to actually have genuine control over what you own because everything that we own now i'm not talking that obviously i can't put my sofa into a blockchain but my point being all of your assets are digital your genuine assets you you're not living in a world anymore where you uh, you know uh, the physical assets uh, quantify your existence and at the same time when i say assets i'm also talking about again i'm coming back to the point of view of individuality number one you're not in control of your individuality in any form only only the only way you can create that individuality and have it directly proportional to your assets is going to be through blockchain and credentialing and if you are doing really well in your industry for the validation of the industry you would need credentialing you cannot do it without that industry is not going to accept any more any kind of degree certificates roaming around with a cv that that world is over so i wanted to break the bubble this way so that it kind of you know hits the message home any other questions yeah so we have a question in the chat q and a okay so david has a question asking that what are the what are the credentials visually going to look like why don't we show it from your uh, platform i think they would love to see how they look and you know what would they look like i think uh, that would be a great way to yeah certainly but yeah. so yeah so in terms of like explaining that i uh, mean well i'll just take the i'll just show you how it looks like so basically uh, it would look like uh, you might have seen or come across your linkedin post when you're scrolling down you might have seen certificates or badges been given out like for example a pmp certification they give a pmp badge which is roll out to the students who complete that certification or microsoft giving badges or google so digital credentials or badges are going to look like and the certificates are going to be digital uh, let me quickly pull that out uh, as a reference uh while they pull it out i'm just going to give you a term for for you guys to understand i think possibly some of you who are tech oriented would know this term how many of us understand the term hashing 
right? I was talking about decentralization. Let me just move ahead and I wanted to show you something, right? So um, a short code for specific plan. It's a mechanism which creates a unique ID, okay? And it's very, very sensitive. So data convert hashed. Now, this is something, um, I, the word might sound very unique or even humorous in a way, but if you research a little bit on it, if you genuinely research on it, it is absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. You know, so um, the process of creating blockchain uh, or a, a, a mechanism, right from the fact that we know that digital signatures and data encryption, right? These are all elements that are not just um, personal, but governments are using it. So like how he was talking about digital certificate files gives the identity to enable encrypted connection. So we all know what's a digital certificate, right? We understand that. So I'm not going to go into the tech technical details of this. Uh, this is something that you should already know. But yeah, I would give you a perspective from the education perspective. Uh, pretty much every organization is developing their own or using. So from one angle, the school, the student, the legitimate user, they all view the digital certificate, right? They save the certificate. Hash data, hashing data, issue certificate. So if tomorrow a school is going to issue a certificate, it's not going to be valid anymore until this complete flow is completed. And the organization that's going to hire that possible student or give them admission in the college is going to look at this. They're expecting this in their blockchain account. So credentialing is extremely important. Without credentialing by the organization or by the, uh, let's say, third-party organization that's given that, that certification is not valid anymore. So if I'm roaming around uh, with, uh, you know, uh, uh, any kind of degree or I've done some kind of an amazing award or a course, I need to make sure that that organization has put it into my portion, it's credential. Otherwise, it is not valid. And I'm talking from example, which is happening right now. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you must be knowing about international boards and international baccalaureate, IB. So IB has already incorporated digital credentialing. And most of the schools of innovation across the world are making it mandatory for students from grade, uh, let's say, high school or junior high school to start understanding blockchain because we know for a fact that by the time they finish university, their credentials are going to be their make and break in the industry. When we talk about genuine innovators and, and people who are going to be the future leaders, right? So this digital tool that is in front of you that the organization is talking about is um, going to be something that's going to make the younger generation absolutely empowered and I would genuinely request that the generation which is in the 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s also understands this because even for you this is equally critical and important to incorporate in your life so I am let's say 39 right now I'm going to turn 40 next year but I'm already using all of these technologies or all of these assets I would call them rather than the technology because I know they're adding an immense amount of value to uh, my profile my jobs. So whenever any organization wants to talk to me about or bring me as a consultant, they look at my blockchain and they're like, yeah, this is what we want. So even LinkedIn, for example, right, uh, is not enough anymore because the perception of LinkedIn, I don't know how many of you use it. I use it quite often and I use it quite well. But what happens is LinkedIn can also be tampered with. We have found almost 40% fake profiles and I've hired them myself who were not uh, uh, through through the process of finding out they were fake profiles. I'm not talking about just the profile, the actual person who sat physically or virtually and then was hired and later was found that he was not even working in that organization. So all of this, um, you know, dirty business is going to go out of the industry. So the industry is going to be more clean. The industry is going to be more like a mirror. What Who you are is what will be seen. Now, some of you might be scared of that because we are very used to social media creating an avatar of you, which you possibly are 40 to 45% is your actual reality, but that's okay. But if you really want to be uh, standing, if you really want to be standing out for who you actually are, then credentialing and blockchain is your mirror because that's where transparency comes. That is very important, right? So I think with that, I'm going to wrap up the session. Thank you very much. And thank you to the attendees. And uh, I think if there are no other questions, I think it was wonderful talking on this topic. It's a topic I'm 
genuinely passionate about and working on myself. So in my organizations and anyone who wishes to connect with me, you just can come at, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, you just have to type Dr. Karandip Singh or you can Google me from there. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, so it was a pleasure. Uh, for pleasure having you as well, uh, Dr. Karandip. Yeah. It was a uh, very good inputs and insights from your end with your expertise, what you have, the research work, what you have done so far. So I think uh, all the attendees who have attended the webinar and who are watching us through our stream platforms actually right. had a very good, insightful session today. Uh, I would definitely want to wrap up today's masterclass uh, remembering that building trust network through digital credential is not just a concept. It is also like a, a, like a key a uh, factor or like a reality which is happening in today's Absolutely. world. Absolutely. And, and, and sorry to interrupt, but I'll also add one very important factor for people who assume it is now going to be a lifestyle choice. Let me tell when I say lifestyle, people who are going to be credentialing and using blockchain are going to be considered way more innovative, way more, uh, when I say, uh, uh, not just tech oriented, but uh, you know, most of the human beings, we always believe in the cool factor. So let me break it down to you from a from your personal branding perspective or who you are as a person. The industry's acceptance of human beings who are accustomed and using and harnessing this technology are going to be on an upper strata of, of, of acceptance, not just by the industry, but by the society itself. So it's going to become a new norm in the society. Social media is not... The norm anymore when i say norm uh you could have a wonderful of course uh you know paid income coming as an influencer from instagram i do but when i talk about who you are as an individual and how the world perceives you the world is going to perceive you through such technology they're not going to perceive you anymore because we know for a fact that 85 percent, and this is data speaking 85 percent of our interactions are in one digital format or the other which then leads to more productive uh, fifteen percent physical interactions. Exactly. So in this kind of a hybrid situation, I think it is absolutely critical to use credentialing and blockchain. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, thank you uh, for that closing uh, remarks as well. And um, I think uh, keeping the time in mind, I think we'll wrap up the session for today. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Karandi for joining in. Thanks once again for being a part of this enriching session. Thank you so much. We would look forward to seeing you in our future events. Until uh, next time, see you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.